and they can do or be anything they want because their mother will keep them. As if we didn't know that mothers are already doing way too much. Now this research is saying that when you walk into the room as a mother and your children are there, they are 800% more rowdy because you are present. Why? Because they feel safe and protected by you. Dad, on the other hand, eh, equivalent to a stranger. So as a mother, essentially, you are carrying the family. You are doing the bulk of the emotional labor and also the bulk of the physical labor through domestic work. And yet we are constantly told that the benefit of men is that they are there to provide and protect. But nobody is feeling protected by them, not even their children. You are literally the equivalent to a stranger. And now I'm going to see in the comments, not all men. Yeah, yeah, we get it. But you know what? We're not talking about that one rare gem over there or that guy that you know. Look, he's already taken. We're talking about society as a whole. We're talking about the fact that this is so common that there's actual research to support the sentiments that women have been expressing, not only on this app, but in our everyday lives. This is why, to no surprise, when you remove the financial barriers, women actually find it easier to be a single mother. This is also why the structures in society gatekeep that knowledge because marriage, 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 but yet it is not living up to the expectations. And it gatekeeps the knowledge that so many single mothers have been saying on this app that it has been easier post-divorce, post-breakup to take care of their children. And for me, if I was a man in the society, this would be my call to action. How much have I been told about masculinity that's no longer fitting? If I want to be a family man, what does that mean in today's society? And based on what women are saying, what can I do to make sure that I do not repeat the mistakes of previous generations? Because we can complain all we want about divorce rates. But yet we're not asking people to change their behavior, especially these gender stereotypes that erode and eat away at the quality of life of most women. So women are either opting out of having children altogether or going into it and then realizing later on that they're actually married single parents or partnered single parents, or they're leaning on other women to fill in the gaps. What kind of options are those? So if you're going to become a mother within the society, just go into it with your eyes wide open. And if you're looking for a partner, an actual partner who's going to share the responsibilities with you, there are some important questions you need to ask and observe them as they answer. For example, go down the list of all the responsibilities of things that you need to do within your household. The cooking, the cleaning, the laundry, the mowing the lawn, all of that stuff. And then ask them whose responsibility was it in their family to get that done? And also what their opinions are of that. Because what you're trying to figure out is whether or not this person actually agrees with the way that they were raised or if they see the problematic gendering of roles and responsibilities within the household. And if you already done had your kids and it, whatever, just take this as validation. We have been saying this from time and, or we've been sensing it that we're just carrying a lot of the labor. And there's just this laissez faire attitude that men have that we just don't have the luxury of having, especially the fathers that are able to walk with their hands in their pocket. Or the men that I see that are able to walk ahead of the stroller and not really care or look behind to see what's up with their children, where their wives are. That's some luxury right there. And until we get into a more community-oriented, community-centered society, we have to start making our own communities. Because it's too much for one person to be carrying the entire family on their back. So first of all, I have not read that study. I need to go back and I need to find this study and take a look at it because I need to understand if the study said something about the fathers being the equivalent to a stranger. I need to understand if they asked the, the two year olds, the three year olds, the four year olds, the five year olds the question, hey, do you look at your father as a stranger? And I need to know what those two-year-olds through five-year-olds, or however old these kids were, I need to know what they said. Because I personally don't know any children or any men 
who have children that would say that their children view them as a stranger. I don't know them personally, and maybe they do exist out there. I'm sure that the, the dads that are not in the household and that don't come around, of course, those kids would see that dad as a stranger because he is a stranger. But if your dad in 2023, especially in our generation, lives in the household with you, if you see your dad as a stranger, then we have a problem. I don't know how common that is, and I need to know what metric they use to measure that. So I don't think she was saying that that the kids view them as a stranger. I think she was saying then more. Who? Listen, I think she was saying more so in reference to their behavior. So you know that, especially our our youngest son, is way more rambunctious and doing his own thing when I'm around mm -hmm. versus when you are around. Like he is definitely more active. He does not listen as much. I think my understanding is that is what they're referencing. Mm -hmm. They in behavior world, mm -hmm. they they act closer to how mm -hmm. they would act with a stranger, with the dad than they would with the mom, which I don't think that that's entirely true either, because our kids act like. They can't move or do anything in front of strangers. And that's not the case when they're with you or with me. But, but I don't I don't think that they're saying that the kids view them as strangers. I just think it's the behavior. Aspect. OK, so let me let me roll back my question and change it a little bit. When they ask these kids. Why they act this way with their mom versus their dad. Which one of the kids said... They're also not asking the kids. They are monitoring the behavior. Which one of these kids specifically told the leaders of this study that I feel safest with mom. That's why I act a god dog on a fool. <laughs> None of the kids said that. I can guarantee. I, if, now, if I read this study... <laughs> And the study says that the kids said that you they feel safe. You know that the study's not going to say so that. They are specifically referencing the, their behavior. So the okay. So the problem is this, though. Again, I haven't read this study. I'm just going off what this young lady said in the video. She's saying that they act this way because they feel the safest with mom. How do we gauge that exactly? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't I don't know if it's that they feel safest with mom. I think it's that I think it's an attention thing. I, I want think, more attention. I think from that mom. there's this attention thing and they know nine times out of ten. Cause you can literally just say stop. But and they'll stop. One hundred. So in that type of scenario, that's not a, st a stranger. That is a I respect what right. this man is telling me not to do. So I'm not going to do it because I know if I do it, then there's going to be an issue. So to me, that's to, that's something that's needed in a household. Agreed. I agree. The crazy thing to me, though, is like within our family, I am more of the disciplinarian than you are. But they listen to you before they listen to me. You're not more the disciplinarian, though. You don't think so? Absolutely not. You feel like you have to discipline more because they act out with you they more. Do. But because I am the disciplinarian, they don't act out with me. All right, maybe but they see realize it. that that little four year old. But realize that they're only acting out with you when I am not around. When I am around, they're not doing all of that. They may get started because they forgot I was there or something or whatever. But if I start to speak, I don't even have to say anything loud. If I start to speak, then some chilling out is going to have to start taking place. And the thing is, when you have kids and there is a father missing, typically there's going to be a rambunctious set of children because there is not a more pressing authority figure around that they have a certain level of respect for. And it, and this has nothing to do with anybody getting beat or, or, or snatched up or physically harmed. It's just something about a dad's look and a dad's voice that stops that. 
And that comes from a level of respect. And that happens with little boys and little girls. But you also have those moms that, or those, you, you know, you can read online. People be like, man, my mom yeah, had this look and I would just stop. I can do it sometimes. Maybe, maybe some of y'all don't, don't have that look. I ain't maybe you it. need to dial back to your grandma and get that look and figure it out. But she I was- have to dig deep for it. Yeah. That's because I'm the fun parent. Okay. I well, I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Okay. Because I, I want the kids to act like they have some sense when they're around me and when they're around you. And if I have to use the dad voice, then that's what they're going to get. Um, or if I use the, the dad look, they'll stop then as well. Um, but see, the thing is, in these types of situations, we just diminish the the role of the father so much the role of the man in these scenarios so much. When we talk about divorce patterns in American society, it is always the man's fault. The mom or the woman in the relationship is always a single mom. Personally, I don't believe that that is always the case because we have to assume that there is never anything wrong with the woman. So now we have a society full of men who are just the problem always. And I don't like that because I am also a man in society and I know other men in society and I know what they do for their wives, with their wives, for their girlfriends, with their girlfriends, for their children and with their children. And they don't fit these roles. And I'm sure somebody would be like, well, that's just anecdotal evidence. That's just people you're around. You can't use that. Well, I can say that for everybody that gives this specific uh, synopsis of how their relationship went, went with the person they're in the relationship with or the people that they know around them in their proximity. That's all anecdotal. Well, if so many people are giving this anecdotal evidence. OK, so here's the thing. If all of y'all can give this anecdotal evidence and it be held as true, then why isn't the anecdotal evidence that men give in these scenarios? Why is that automatically false? Because y'all are liars. I'm just no, I know, no, no, I'm just saying. I know, I know, but that's what that's what would be that's what would be said though. Men are just liars. I I think that we like to take these these small studies and turn them into something that they're not. I don't, and we turn them into weapons. Yeah, I don't. To me, I've never been a single parent, but I was raised by a single mom, and I was surrounded by single moms. There is nothing easy about it, right? Okay, what? it's hard. But why was it's she saying? Why was she saying together? it? <laughs> now that last part about us being more of a community, yes. I agree with wholeheartedly. Yes. You need a community of people like and, that. That is truth, and that's what Mary say or not. that that women find it easier to raise their children alone Hogwash. than they do to do it with a partner. If that's the case, then you have the wrong partner. Yes. There, there is no way you can tell me that you had a good father, a good husband, a good man. And it was just easier just to do it alone. But that's what they're saying though. They're, they're simply saying that the men that they had were trash and all men, the majority of men in society are he trash. He chose trash and he's trash for being trash. Right. But again. But that's not all men. Right. He don't walk ahead of me and lead me back there tending to the kids by myself. But what's going to be said to that was, well, sis, she made a point to say that it wasn't all men. It's just that you have a, a man even, in a small well, we sector. Were, so we were just out tonight, right? In the middle of downtown. There were lots of families out there. And a lot of men with their kids and, it, and their right, wives. And they were with their kids and their wives. They weren't off walking ahead of them. They were walking together. That he was behind them, making sure that his eyes were on them or walking beside them. Like there was evident protection happening. Walking near the side of the street and blocking them from that side, making sure they're on the inner side like all of this stuff i see we are just in a place to where we are just gonna just continue to paint men as scum of society 
all day long. And I'm just not going to let you do it. And I'm not going to let you do it because I'm surrounded by good men, right? I have a wonderful husband. While my parents are have been divorced or separated since I was a, a child, my dad is he wasn't a great dad, but he's a he's a decent man. <laughs> my brothers are good men. Like I I don't I don't have this picture of these horrible, deplorable men who just leave women off to rot and raise kids by themselves and are not present. And I don't I don't have that picture. And it hurts my heart that so many of you do. But it really hurts my heart because so many of you actually do have good examples, but you don't see it for the few bad that are littered around. But not only that. This situation is a dangerous scenario because what happens is a lot of y'all, like she said, finding it easier to be single, mothers have sons and you're raising your sons with that mindset that you have. And I don't see how you can have the mindset of just completely disliking men and understand or feeling like men are the most most of the men are just the scum of the earth and then think that you're not going to raise a man who may not spit that same cast or that same mold that you say that you hate. You can't mask your feelings of how you feel about their, their father and typically other men in society. You can't mask that all the time. At some point that's going to come out and you think you're showing your sons how to be great men in society, but you are not a man. It's We talked about this on the last episode. It's very difficult to mentor someone in something you are not proficient in. I would not send my daughter to a man somewhere so a man can show this woman, uh, this, this little girl, how to become a woman. I do know that you can obviously offer some sort of advice when it comes to dealing with the opposite sex in, in the world. You can, uh, you can definitely offer that advice, but in actually showing him how to be an upstanding man in society, you can't do it. And I want to touch on, she started talking about how, you know, and this is a big conversation all the time about carrying the load of the family. You need to ask these questions. Uh, what was the role of, you know, who, who prepared the food, who washed the clothes, who did all this and see if he agrees with how he was raised and see it, what his answer is to that. So I would assume you're saying that if he said that, well, my mom was in charge of doing that. Do you follow it up with saying, well, do you agree that your mom should have been the one in charge of that? So my question then becomes, let's say he does say that his mom was in charge of that, right? And she says, well, do you agree with it? And he says, well, you know, I never really thought about it because I don't think that most men are going to be like, yeah, women should be in the kitchen barefoot and cooking dinner and uh, washing clothes and cleaning my underwear. I don't think most men would be doing it. I think that they would be like most of the time, most people will. I mean, I guess, you know what I'm saying? That's That's what I'm used to. I, I don't think it's a problem. Um, and then you'll have those that be like, yes, obviously that's what a woman's supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be out of the house working. My question in this scenario is when he says something like that, you know, yes, I think that woman should be, you know, doing these types of things or I haven't thought about it. When he says that, my question is if he turns around and has a list for you, are you going to be offended because y'all are offended with the, what do you bring to the table talk? Right. Which nobody's asking you that on no date. I don't think most people are having this conversation. This is social media speak, but if he turns around and starts asking you, so how do you feel about changing the oil and cutting the grass and doing the plumbing in the house? And, uh, I don't know, uh, laying concrete and all this stuff outside. I don't know how many women will be like, Yes, let me do that. Yes, I think we should share the responsibility doing of doing that. And that's where the problem comes in. You're upset about doing laundry or cooking in the house, right? 
And no one's saying that you... It's everyday stuff. And, and, and you're not out here pouring concrete and no, doing the plumbing work. Okay, hold on. And, and and no one's saying that, that women should be the only people in the house doing that. At least I'm not saying that. Because it's don't, not like that in my house. I, I don't think that that's how that should work. But here's the thing, though. No one is outside cutting the grass every week when their husband is out cutting the grass with him. Right. You might be out I'm there. Not cutting grass. You might be out there in your flower bed and planting your flowers every once in a while. But you're not about to be out do. there cutting grass and edging the lawn and uh, I don't know, leaf blowing and cleaning out gutters and all. You're not doing that. And mm-hmm. so we want it to be split down the middle in the household uh, with the chores around the house. But we don't want to get outside and do what's considered the manly work. We like to talk about the patriarchy and masculinity and how, uh, you know, men are seen in society. Again, women a lot of times uphold these values that they try to break men out of. And it's like, do you want men to do this or do you not want men to do this? Do you want this to be equal or do you not want this to be equal? We are in a society right now to where you're saying that, just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I need to be the one going grocery shopping. Ma'am, I will get on Instacart right now and pick these groceries and have them delivered to the house right now. Right? I can do that because we in 2023. We can do that now. You ain't got to go to the grocery store unless you absolutely want to. You know what I'm saying? And washing clothes, throwing them in the dryer. Okay. Let's, let's share it. That's fine. But next time I'm outside taking the trash out, I need you to grab one of these bags and roll this trash can out to the curb. Exactly. I think, again, playing devil's advocate, I think the issues ensue because the things that are deemed the woman's work Mm -hmm. are day to day things. You wash you wash clothes every day? No. But you have to cook every day. Mm-hmm. You have to clean every day. You have you? to wash the dishes every day. No, you don't have to clean every day. Yes, you do. You got to pick up something and wipe. I can't go and cook in a dirty kitchen. It's got to be oh, cleaned. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a part of cleaning. So cooking and washing dishes. Okay. Cleaning. Laundry, laundry is not every day. Okay. Agreed. Laundry and folding clothes, that's a once a week thing. We put that in line with la- mowing the lawn. Because mm-hmm. that's like a once a week, once every two week thing. Right? Um, once a week raising the kids being being the one attentive and responsible for getting the kids dressed making sure they eat making sure homework is done field trip forms are signed all of those things are day-to-day things those are not day-to-day field, yes. field trip forms are not field day-to-day. trip forms may not be but homework most of the times is True. getting them ready for school is ironing their clothes sure. is mm-hmm. but a man's quote-unquote roles those things that you do on the outside changing the oil that's every three months you don't change the oil anyway right you will take my car to the to the dealership mm-hmm. and get the oil changed so right. i appreciate that um i do take it sometimes so Act okay. like I don't because I do. I'm not saying you don't. I'm I just, know. I'm just saying our our household is different. We don't run on those stereotypical things. I'm not going out there to cut the grass, though. I'm going to tell you that right now. If I got to go cut the grass, we're going to go hire somebody because it's too hot. So I'm the, not doing it. So with, cleaning out the gutters. With your devil advocacy, right? I wasn't done with my devil's advocacy. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Because I was talking about the day-to-day stuff Mm -hmm. with the wife or the woman. Okay. And the man's is stuff like the yard work, taking out the trash, which is taking out the trash of the curb is a a once-a-week thing. Taking out the trash in the house might be, it really just depends because we sometimes take it out. Every day. Twice a day sometimes. Yes. We make a lot of trash. I don't know why. I don't know why. Anyway, um, doing the oil, doing the car maintenance, Stuff like that. Those are not everyday things. Name something that as a man you need to do as a traditional man's role that you do every day. So the so I I um so with that being said, right, there is nothing specifically that I can think of off the top of my head that you're doing every day. But the problem that we're having right now is you're you're talking about frequency. We're not talking about frequency. We're talking about something that has to be done in general it, it, based on society's roles, right? So if you want something to be split up inside the house 
then what happens outside the house that needs to be split up as well period and we not the the discussion is not surrounding frequency or how often something has to happen and i don't think i'm not doing the outside stuff and i don't think most men want women to do that but the thing is women want men want men to split the the things in the house which i don't think there should be a problem with i think it should be no problem with splitting doing the dishes right splitting washing and folding the clothes splitting getting the kids ready that's what should be done you know but you know people want to be like we're not going 50 50. okay you talking about 50 50 on the bills, right? But if I'm going 100 on these bills, then why you can't go 100 on these chores? That's different, I think, hmm? to an extent. Oh. If you leave me at home and I ain't got to go to work and you taking care of everything on the financial. You need to be doing I'm all gonna this. I'm going to mop these hardwood floors and vacuum this carpet upstairs every other day. But they're coming. They're, they're, ain't they're, going to be no laundry piled what up. What they're going to say is in that scenario, women are still working then you're being then it's 50 50 you are still working it so is then, now it now i i take nothing away from stay-at-home moms or wives i have never been a full-time stay-at-home mom or wife but i have been a part-time I, it was a time in my life i only worked a day or so a week and i was at home with with our oldest son it's a job okay mm-hmm. it is work because they tear stuff up and then you got to constantly clean it back up because it's not a job why are Yes, it is. It's not a job. It is difficult, but I don't think it's a job. But go ahead. Fine, whatever. It's a lot of work, or it can be a lot of work. Let me say that. It doesn't have to be, I don't think. Um, It kind of just depends on what your arrangement was. For me, it was because our our oldest was a little, I don't want to say he was a terror, but every time I cleaned something up, he just went and pulled something else out. But... I'm the one who bought him all the stuff that he was able to pull out. So whose fault was it really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about right now. I bought all the stuff for him to keep pulling out. Though. I don't know if you know it or not, but it's it'd be, it'd be pillows on the couch. Those are going to be on the floor. And they were. You got, you got paper somewhere because we got to write something. Pillows on the floor. Pots I don't know what we writing, but. Out the, out the cabinet. I'm in here trying to cook. He done made a whole drum set while now he over here slamming cabinet doors and pulling stuff out the pantry. He was a little busybody. It can be a lot of work. Yeah. I don't even know where I was going with that. I don't know where you're going with I don't either, know. But the thing is this. I don't think that men are the terror of society that I people keep trying to paint them out They're to be. Not. Are there some men that are terrors of society? Absolutely. 100,000, thousand, thousand percent. They exist. Just as there are terrors of a society who don't have that little dangly thing in between their legs. Y'all are terrible too. And while we keep trying to say there's a minimal amount of men in society that are great and do what they're supposed to be, there is a minimal amount of women that are doing the great things that the men need them to do. We keep wanting to say that there's a list that women have that they need men to do. They need men to meet in these relationships and in these marriages and as parents, as a father to their their kids. But there's also a list for the women. I need people to start having a more balanced mindset and stop looking at this thing as it's your fault or it's your fault. Both of us have similar issues. While they are not the exact same because we are two different types of human beings. We are two different types of human beings or we species, <laughs> whatever we are, you know, <laughs> um, while we are two different types within the same species, right? Um, there is some similarities in the issues that we have with one another. And I feel like if we could get to the common ground of realizing that this is something that does not need to be pushed on one side because there must be 
balance with all this stuff that we have going on, I feel like we can get to where we need to get to and actually start having some more positive relationships with one another. Um, as long as things are set up the way that they're set up um, legally, that's going to be an issue always. People get into these marriages and they're able to leave so quickly. I don't like how he didn't do the laundry, so I'm out of here. That's what you left for? Did you even have a conversation with him? Did you communicate this with him? Or did you talk to him in, in, in a way that made him feel like a child, you know? Or was he toxic? Yes, he probably was toxic. Or maybe he wasn't toxic. Maybe you were the one that was toxic. We got to get out of this. And then we're running these studies trying to make it look like men are just garbage as well. And again, in a lot of these studies, you're looking at behavioral patterns of children and how they're interacting. But you can't read the minds of the child. So you're basing a study off of that. It's science. Where? How? Where are the numbers? Huh? We, we, well, I was going to say we all know, but lots of us know that a study can be skewed. And say whatever you want in to. Whatever direction you want it to go. There's a book called Lying with Numbers. You guys should look that up. And you can lie with numbers in studies. You can make them say whatever the heck you want to say. And you can word things and you can word uh, the presentation of the numbers in a way that make it seem like things are way worse than what they are. The only thing that I really agree with her about, if I can remember off the top of my head, is what she was saying at the end about creating a community around, you know, around women and around men and around kids. Just having this communal mindset um, while I... <sighs> Let me just back up just a second. Having a communal mindset but also still maintaining a nuclear family. Because what I don't want this to sound like is that I agree with just having a communal scenario and just completely doing away with the nuclear family. I don't agree with that at no. all. And I can hear people saying, well, that's due to the patriarchy and white supremacy that the nuclear family existed. So we need to get rid of that and just go with the communal mindset. No. I don't agree with that at all. I like my nuclear family. I'm sorry that a lot of people have terrible nuclear families. But again, sometimes it's not always the other people. A lot of y'all really need to seek therapeutic help in a lot of the scenarios that you have before you decide to go somewhere and file papers. And I, I don't see I've never had a divorce before, so I don't know how this works. And I would assume that no one is requesting that you go to some type of counseling before you go get a divorce. For or some maybe. divorces, there that is a stipulation. In some states, it's a stipulation that you go to counseling before you get a divorce, and you, or the, how long? and or that you have a period of separation before you can finalize a divorce. Oh, okay. I I need to look at. I only those know this numbers. because my parents are divorced. Okay, I, I need to look at the numbers on that because that is something that I think needs to be uh, enacted in every situation. And it, and it needs to be a very, very, very neutral party. It can't be um, one of these TikTok therapists that lean more to the woman's side or lean more to the man's side. I, that, that mess is nonsense. I think that we should get back to the root of divorce, which is having these conversations and these things before you yeah. actually get married and i know but that's why some, she was saying the list i know and no no no. i mean some professional intervention oh, before yeah. you go and get married in some states marriage counseling is required before you get married but in truth it's not really it's really a formality it's not real marriage counseling you go in you take this stupid assessment well, that, is that for everybody though is it is it like that for everybody that was how it was with us okay but that was nonsense <laughs> but if that's how it was for us imagine how it is for so many other people i would hope that people weren't going to just their pastor i don't know why you think that they were going somewhere else i need them to go Talk to somebody with some real background i think that a for real in-depth 
marriage counseling session should happen before you get married. Mm -hmm. I, I am not one for government all in your business. I'm not. I don't think that this had this should have anything to do with government. I think that if if you want to get married, I think you should take it upon yourself yep. to have some couples counseling, a sit down conversation, because unfortunately, a lot of us are doing this with no guidance. A lot of us are not coming from uh, two parent households or those types of scenarios. So you don't know what you don't know. But you know what, though, with that? Dang, we were supposed to be ending this, and now you you open up a whole another can <laughs> of worms. But you know, how how do, how do you think that that would work exactly? And I'm asking that because when are we supposed to get this counseling? Because as a man, popping the question is supposed to be a surprise. But if we well, get why? What? Why does it have to be a surprise? I don't know why it, it gotta be, it but was that's still a surprise. I knew you were gonna ask me. We had gone ring shopping, but it was still a surprise when you asked me to marry you. Yeah, but you knew it was coming. A lot of people, a lot of people want that wow factor. You know what I'm saying? It can still be so, a wow factor. So, but I'm saying most people are gonna want it to still be a surprise. I don't want her to know that I'm proposing, and I don't think a lot of women would want to know prior. You know, uh, but the thing is. If if we need to have this counseling session, when do we have it? Because if I pop the question and we go to this counseling session and it's like the counselor is like, bro, y'all need to roll this back a little bit. Because <laughs> if they say that, then we're going to end this relationship. It's, it's nothing for me to work on because it's just like telling somebody you love them and they don't say it back. We're not staying together after that. Oh my God! It's the same situation with this this marriage. Uh, Why? Because maybe y'all can work it out before you get mm, married. It depends on what it is. But also, it should happen before you get engaged because the problem is you've been in a relationship long enough and you've developed these feelings to the point that now you want to marry this person without realizing that this is not a good relationship for you. Yes, but you know, a lot of people fight will fight against this. Yeah, I go playing your little devil's advocates, isn't it? <laughs> um, but uh, a lot of people will fight against this because, um, you know, people don't see a reason to go to any kind of counseling or therapy unless there's a problem. I'm saying that that's not true. You go and get a physical every year or you should at least. There's nothing wrong with you. That is a good a good point. That is a good. It nah, is something is wrong with most people. But um, it's anyway. at, at least in America, when it comes to that physical, they just don't be testing for the stuff that need to be tested. Anyway, I've said this before. Most jobs, when you work full time or part time, they have employee assistance programs where they have a certain number of therapy sessions that are totally covered. Take advantage of it. For yourself, for couples counseling, for family counseling, whatever. Tap into it. Yeah. That that is that is a nugget that y'all need to put in put in your brain right there. Um, for all you dating people. Um, and even for you married people mm -hmm. who think that y'all are on the rocks, don't think that therapy is just nothing. Uh don't think that you don't want somebody in your business. You might need to have somebody in your business to help you mediate the issue that's going on. And don't enter into therapy with the mindset of I'm just going just so they can tell me that it's the other person's fault. Because you you walk into therapy like that if you want to and you find out real quick that it's actually you. And in truth, if you go to a therapist and they tell you, well, it's that person's fault, that's probably not the therapist that you want. I loved our therapist. Mm -hmm. He was very clear that. Even if I felt like I didn't have a problem, if he had a problem, I had a problem and vice versa. Mm -hmm. it, one one of us can't have a problem and the other one not have a problem because we are one. Mm -hmm. 100%. 100%. Now this time, guys, we're going to end it for real. All right. <laughs> all right. Let you close it out, honey. That's all we have for tonight. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button, and we will see y'all next time. Get down in the comments. Peace. Good night. Thank you.